Discovery Video 103. We're at Aqueduct and we got a turf race here. Turf races are four star preferred races. Best of the best. I'm on the main page. I'm going to log into the free area and click on View All Discovery Videos. The link of the banner. Here's the page with all of the videos and uh, we got a hundred and some now. Under the red arrow on the right here is the uh, value odds and overlay preferred races listing. And uh, these races uh, I have come to find out through my 16 years of research uh, that uh, these races give me a much better than the average chance on getting a nice odds, a nice price value odds overlay winner. And they are as follows. You got starter allowance races. It'll say ALW, the price, and then the letter S. It has to have the little letter S at the end. All other allowance races are not preferred. Non graded stakes and grade three races. The non graded stakes will have the name of the stakes and the purse. If it's a grade three, it'll say G3. It won't say G3, it doesn't actually speak. It'll just have the letter G and three. Um, grade 1, grade 2, not preferred. Maiden claiming races, all of those, those are highly rated 4 stars, good stuff there. Maiden special weight, claiming races with a condition. It'll say CLM, once again it won't say anything. CLM, the claiming price, and then some kind of numbers and letters to the right of the claiming price you will see on the report there and uh, those are conditional claimers highly rated four stars bottom and low level claiming races uh, most tracks five to ten thousand dollar claimers and you got all races run over the turf regardless of whatever else it is uh, it's highly rated four stars great opportunities on the turf we love the turf and in this video we're looking at uh, one of those types and then uh, final condition is uh, all races run on a main track uh, labeled anything but fast okay so uh, turf race I've got my four star preferred race so I will then look at the value odds horses see where we're at uh, my focus is on the value odds horses okay they get the icon for a reason uh, the only thing that we need to do is see what the offering is near post time to make a decision. I got number one, Midnight Billy, and uh, number five, Kangaroo. Uh, we need to see what's going on near post time before we proceed. And uh, I've got it here somewhere. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Here were your odds at your post time. Uh, now, if you bet in advance, there's two ways on going about figuring the odds near post time. For the most part, any horse, value odds horse, 20 to 1 or 15 to 1 morning line, there's a very good chance that horse is going to be a good price near post time. It's a psychological break that affects the horse players they didn't they do not feel psychologically um, maybe not even be aware of it but they do not feel that 15 to 1 or 20 to 1 morning line horses don't have a shot to win however these horses at 8 to 1 or 10 to 1 morning line frequently get bet down if that was the case um, you know you could you could judge and say uh, the one will probably be better odds than the five. However, the best way to go about betting in advance is to use conditional wagering that the uh, United States account wagering companies pretty much all have now. Conditional wagering. I use Twin Spires. I think they were the first to offer that. But conditional wagering allows you to place a bet in advance whatever the morning of the morning of the races whatever and you can uh, say I want a minimum odds of and then whatever you say I say 10 to 1 for me uh, zero minutes to post 
Uh, that's how I play these. I play two, two separate tickets on the one and the five. If I was playing in advance, um, or you can go 12 to 1, etc. But the big benefit is actually being there and seeing the odds in their post time because then you can actually see what's being offered. Which brings me to another topic. Uh, as you can see here, the 13 did draw into the race and was 11 to 1. Uh, I do get this question, what if there's another horse in the race that's good odds? Okay, well, here's the rule of thumb. Remember this. The most important thing. You want to go with the highest ranked value odds horse at the highest odds. Always focus on the value odds horse. Even if there's another horse in the race at double digit odds. Okay? So, with that being said, the only considerations are for the one and the five here. Now we take a look at those two. The one of the five is three to one, and the, the one is also three to one true odds. However, 20 to one compared to 10 to one, that's double the price, double the odds, and a higher ranked horse. Okay? This is your focus. Now, you have an option, even though we're going to focus on the higher priced, higher ranked value odds horse, you have an uh, option if you want. I don't, but you can put a save or win bet on the five. I don't even mess with that, but you can if you want to be very conservative. I have found, and here's the reason why I don't, I have found that in the long run, focusing on this horse at higher odds uh, absolutely positively pays off in the long run. Okay? So, with those situations being established, we now have narrowed our focus down to the one horse, who obviously, as you can see here, is the best overlay in Group A. Okay? So my bets are going to be on the one. Now, let's take a closer look at the one What's going on with this horse? Well, uh, there's a lot of icons here. Significant, mostly, I have to say, is the the green and white icon here. It says Final Time T. And I really love this icon on turf races. It really, really does well. What this stands for is that this horse has the best final time rating on the turf. So if that race is repeated today, uh, this is the horse to beat. Not only that, but uh, he's got the best full card report speed figures. And obviously we have a way of figuring them, as, as does all the others. But uh, as far as the way we figure them, he's got the highest speed figures. Uh, also, exiting a key race now. The fact that that key race was 38 days ago, which is not that long ago, but more importantly, the fact that um, he finished 10th out of 11, you would think, well, the key race isn't really doesn't really mean anything if the horse didn't run well in the key race, and my research has proved not true. Uh, key races are significant. No matter, I find it to be true, no matter what finish position the horse, even if the horse finished dead last, and I also find it significant that uh, it doesn't matter how long ago the key race was. So it does have some kind of value. Um, now, uh, you have, these are your correlating proven winning overlay angles from the 36 in the ebook here free ebook 36 proven winning overlay angles each one of those stands for a different one and you can read them there uh, so that's that's what's going on as far as things to like um, and there you go there's a 102 speed rating two points better than the rest power rating of a 113 just one tick uh, one tick from the top 
Okay? Now, why did the betting public not bet this horse? Very simple. The betting public, most of the time, will look at what a horse did last time out especially, and judge that as the performance of what to expect today, seeing that he ran 10th in an 11-horse field, regardless of what type of race it was. This weighs heavily on the majority of the betting public's decision and they will base their decision on that mostly that and uh, the thing is you have to remember and I think that a lot of people forget this horses run in cycles okay only once in a lifetime do you come across horses like Zenyatta who won every race for however many races okay those are great race horses 99.9 .9 percent of the horses racing are going to run in cycles of highs and lows, which means they are not always going to run a good race and they're not always going to run a bad race. Okay? Uh, with that in mind, our information is telling us if this horse runs his good race today, he's got enough to beat this field. And that 20 to 1 is worth the risk. And I say the word risk in that all gambling, no matter what it is, is a risk but you weigh the odds versus the risk and that's how I determine what makes a good bet or not I think the 20 to 1 offering makes this a good risk but the betting public because of the way the, the small things that they judge the narrow-minded uh, thought process uh, they'll look at that last race and say oh well that horse is you know got nothing to offer but when you look at the entire story and the entire picture like we did here, like this report, like this report lays it out for you, when you look at the entire picture, it's a totally different story than what most of the betting public is, is looking at. In with any, with any case, uh, that's the pluses and minuses are why we like and why the betting public does not. Now, make the bet. First and foremost is the win bet. We don't want to have just a trifecta bet with a 20 to 1 horse and somehow we don't cash the try however we did we did cash all our bets here but uh, you want to have a win bet before you do anything else and some players only bet to win and that's fine you can bet just to win it's a good conservative approach but before we do anything else we're gonna put that win bet in for the videos here I go 10 bucks to win next I wheel the exacta okay that would be a uh, two dollar one all exacta key to one on top with all underneath uh, now this is the last half of the daily double I also wheel doubles so I'd be looking ahead from the ninth to the eighth race and I would want to make sure to get my all one five since you don't know the odds during post time even though you got a good judge in the morning line you do want to come in here with an all one five not knowing in advance the odds however like I said higher ranked 15 20 to 1 morning line it will pretty much give you a tip that that's going to be the higher price horse but you got the wheel coming in on the double uh, because obviously I would look ahead and see this is a four star preferred race get my bet in there uh, so I wheel doubles and I wheel exactus now the trifecta is as follows uh, I'm going to do one dollar trifecta play the one on top all by himself in the first position of the trifecta and then in the second position I'm going to put 13 5 4 2 that represents the rest of horses in group A and the top horse in group B and then for the third position in the trifecta I will go all and then uh, fourth position superfect the 10 cent super I will go all okay those are the strategies that I've come to found work out fantastic with the reports and here's what happened turf races are very frequently decided by a head or a nose and we seem to be getting a lot of good head bobs this year this race was no different final odds uh, were in at 18 to 1 the favorite did run second so I say it finished 145 in the trifecta and one four and five so we're catching that too your uh, win mutual was 3840 
and uh, we caught all of our other bets and here they are here your ten dollar win bet returns 192 bucks you choose that's not a value odds exacta was it one four no I gotta I gotta fix that they're fixed so we hit the exacta with our strategy obviously we had a wheel 165.50 a uh, dollar on the trifecta strategy hit there 733.50 10 cent super a little extra money there 356.85 and the double big long shot in the first half of the double remember we wheel doubles as well as exactas and this is the reason why I wheel because you can catch that big one plus the one you're betting and you come up with a daily double like this this is possibly the biggest let me see 1760 might be in the top three or four doubles for the whole year. I think the best, the highest double we caught this year was 2100. So it's right up there uh, in the top three or four hits for daily doubles this year. Uh, final total 3,207.85. Now you got your three pronged approach. You got handicapping, learning, which is basically learning how to read our reports and interpret them proven wagering strategies uh, like I have in all the videos are the same and the final piece of the puzzle is bankroll management you want to take uh, your horse racing bankroll set it aside this is money just for horse racing and of that bankroll you will bet a certain percentage maximum on any given race that you participate in and hopefully you're betting preferred races four star preferred races at the tracks you see here on the on the page that I'm following that are hot or you know productive and then uh, I say one to two percent if you want to be almost guaranteed never to blow your bankroll if you stick with a one to two percent maximum per race bet then uh, you know like I said they will almost guarantee that you never blow your bank and uh, you, you know you'll be on the path and what you want is you want a slowly building bankroll okay by putting the bankroll management in we are able to get from one bet to the next we're able to get from the sixty nine hundred dollar hit to the next one from day to day and then uh, you know I think that most horse players do not pay any much attention to bankroll management but uh, it's absolutely the most uh, not the most but it is just as important a part of the whole sequence of handicapping the strategies of wagering and uh, the bankroll management you, you have to have a three-prong complete approach if you want to have a good chance at getting long-term profit as a horse player okay it's like if you don't use a bankroll management it's like trying to ride a bicycle without the handlebars or try to ride the bicycle without a tire or try to ride a bicycle without the seat okay uh, or something you know take a part away take a significant part away you're gonna have a tough time achieving what you want and that's what I consider bankroll management as being part of the whole process uh, for long-term profit now as far as what tracks to bet just check up on my horse racing digest discovery video page here and you will see what tracks that I'm um, that are hot that are productive uh, obviously aqueduct here woodbine woodbine delta downs churchill downs churchill downs turf paradise monday tuesday that's a good track monmouth park uh now we're at hollywood and Calder, Suffolk, yeah just check out this page and uh, you will see where I'm making the videos at and uh, right now you got Churchill, Aqueduct, Delta Downs, Woodbine, uh, Turf Paradise Monday, Tuesday, currently 
uh, that's what we're focusing on. Santa Anita was real good. Now we're at Hollywood. I expect some good things coming from there as well. You know, we're always good on the big circuits, Kentucky, New York, and Southern Cal. We always seem to. We had a fantastic year from Saratoga to Belmont. Now to Aqueduct, we're starting off on the right foot there. So uh, good racing, good betting, good racing. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, let you go here. And uh, thank you very much for viewing. And as always, good luck with all your bets.